Hello and welcome to another edition of An English Guy Watching Wrestling. I'm an English Guy, I'm Nick, thank you so much for clicking on another video, I really do appreciate it. And this one we're going to be covering the 24th edition, 24th of March 2021 edition of AW Dynamite. With that being said, let's get into what was a fantastic Dynamite this week. Opening match was Matt Seidel versus Kenny Omega and if Matt Seidel won the match, he would get a shot at the AEW World Title. Now, <clears throat> a little backstory: these two men uh, had an altercation in the promo backstage interview. Sorry, on um, AEW Dark Elevation recently, and <clears throat> Matt Sadell and his brother Mike had already had a tag match that night. And so, after Matt Sadell had a match, he got hit. So hit from behind by Kenny, pinned him immediately with the one winged angel. Tony Khan came out and said. No, no, Kenny, that's not happening like that. And they made this match with Dynamite. And considering what Kenny Megan did, like, kind of took a shortcut to win the match just like that, I knew that these two men, <clears throat> when they were given a full-length match, could put on a great match. And boy, did they. This was stunning stuff. It really was. Um, Matt Seidel has been one of my favourite wrestlers for many years now because of just how good he is. You know, 20-year-plus veteran. He's always been great. Kenny Omega is my favourite wrestler in the gym, probably the best wrestler in the world. And when you put these two in the ring, you're just going to get absolute gold. And that's exactly what you got between these two men. And even though Kenny Omega won the match, this was a brilliant showing by Matt Seidel. And these two clicked so well. And as far as I know, it was only the third time they've only ever met in the ring, considering the length of the career both men have had. And the last time was, I think, 2015, if I remember I'm not sure if that was in PWG or Japan. But either way, this match was an absolutely brilliant opener to what was, an, I said, a very, very good edition of Dynamite. And this was the kind of match that you really love to see both men be able to stretch their creative legs, so to speak, and show what they can do. And boy, they did it. It was, was well worth watching. This is how you open a show. Great, great stuff. A definite thumbs up to both men for this one. <clears throat> And the second match was Hangman Adam Page versus Caesar Benoni. Now, Hangman is kind of get a bit of a, I'm not going to say strange push, but a, a different kind of push, we'll put it that way. Kind of like aligning himself to the Dark Order, but not being part of the Dark Order. And he's getting some more winning ways as of late in AEW, and that's great. And that's what this one, it wasn't the longest match. It, was, it wasn't a squash match, it was a short, short match. But Hangman Page got the win with the buckshot lariat. So continuing on his winning ways and thumbs up to that. So short match, but fun. The next match was FDR and Sean Spears versus Dante Martin and Varsity Bronze. Now, this was FTR and Sean Spears' first match as a collective known as the Pinnacles. Um, after their <clears throat> formation, shall we say, a couple of weeks ago in Dynamite, this is their first official match as a group in AEW against the Varsity Bronze, who are superb, and Dante Martin, who I've said before, is just another world. And this was a short, well, not a short match, I'll say that. It was a medium, <laughs> medium length match, we'll put it that way. Strange it is to say, that's what I'd call it. Um, but this was really good stuff, too. And <clears throat> I think the Pinnacle, like I think, are the only really heel faction in AEW at the minute, and there's not many other heel factions. I mean, I won't say Death Triangle heels, I know it's a lie, Matt Hardy mentions that, I think they're the best way to call wheels. But <clears throat> I think this is, in terms of, of variety, a great, great um, group. Pinnacle is for those who know MJF, who I'm not sure if he leaves the group, but he's part of it, Tony Blanchard, Wardlow, FTR, and Short Spears. So definite group of very, very, very talented wrestlers being part of a group. And of course, very, very soon they will go to war with the inner circle, that's no doubt. Or when the Inner Circle return. They're still called the Inner Circle. I'm sure they will be, but time will tell on that one. But this was actually a good match, to be fair, and I think a really good show of the pinnacle doing what they can do. And I don't think I've ever seen Short Spears and FTR being in a tag match before. And I know at one point they were both managed by FTR, this was, and Short Spears managed by Taylor Blanchard, but I don't think I ever saw them tag together, if I remember so correctly, but they did in this match. Nothing wrong with it. And it's great to see Short Spears back in the ring. I've always liked him. And after taking some time off, he's back, show what he can do, and he's a great wrestler. FTR, I've said it before, perhaps the best tag team in wrestling, bar none wrestling-wise. Against Varsity Bronze, who are really starting to show some really good stuff, and as I said, Dante Martin is a fantastic player. He's an incredible talent. 
But that's it. Thumbs up for this one. And the next match. Um, I'm not going to... I say, I usually say these reviews match of the night, but there was more than one match of the night. Uh, opening match was definitely a contender. The main event was a contender. And so was this. The Young Bucks and <clears throat> Brandon Cutler versus the Lucha Bros and Laredo Kid. And if you remember the very first fighter face, it was Laredo Kid and Lucha Brothers versus Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and Zilli. And that match was just beyond description in terms of just insanity. This was no different. If not, it was better. This was brilliant. There's no other way to say it. I absolutely love this. And multiple times in the match I was watching going, what? what? Okay, I was literally shaking my head and think, I'm going, wow, that is ridiculous. But when you've got six men like this who are just so good, putting them together in a match, you're just going to get this kind of match. And this was phenomenal. No other way to start. I think this was one of the best six-man tag matches I've ever seen in AEW full stop. After that, after, of course, aside from the one I mentioned with Laredo Kid and Lucha Brothers versus the Elite. But um, this was <clears throat> bonkers. <laughs> it's the best way to describe it. High spots, incredible high flying. And I'm going to say, great to see Laredo Kid back in AEW after so long. Obviously, because of the pandemic, he wasn't able to wrestle there. But he's I've seen him wrestle... Not just in AW, but elsewhere. He is fantastic. And I wouldn't definitely not object to seeing more of him in AW. And he will be there next week. Because next week it is the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega versus the Laredo Kid and um, Lucha Brothers. And that is going to be something else as well. Um, but this match, you have to see it. It is just it's the kind of six-man tag match with this kind of talent. You're going to expect times two. It was that good. And I thought... This is what AEW is all about, just putting on some of the best action in the world and look and being so good at it. And this was no exception. You, this was... <laughs> I do wish I could have more than two thumbs for this because it would literally get four thumbs up if I had two pairs of arms. <laughs> but, um, okay, but you've got to see it. This was brilliant, brilliant stuff. So I'm going to give it a <laughs> thumbs up to this one. And the next match was, as far as I can tell, yes, the main event. I don't tell it was the main event. Um, this was Nyla Rose versus Ty Conte, which was a rematch from the AEW Eliminator Qualified Tournament for the number one contendership for the AEW Women's Championship. Now, these two had a very good match in the qualifying tournament. And I've said it before, Ty Conte is, I think, the most improved female wrestler in AEW this year. She always brings, seems to bring something different in every single match. And in this one, she really did. And against Nyla Rose too, who is the most powerful woman in all of AEW. But Nyla Rose found some really unique offense to bring her to her level. And this was not a match I was expecting Ty Conte to win. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way because of the Nyla Rose has been on the rolls of late. But this match was really favored to take on to show what we can do. And Nyla Rose, again, showed what she can do. I mean, everyone has seen Nyla Rose, and she is great. I really like Nyla. But this was <clears throat> one of Ty Conte's best AEW performances to date. I And she's made some very good performances. But this was a match that really showed what the women's division could do, which has been fantastic all year, all year round so far. But this one was another example of how diverse and how different the wrestlers can be. And this was definitely no exception for Tay. Because her bringing her unique um, offense to what she does, because she mixes the judo in with her wrestling, which is great. It's a very much a, a very diverse style in the ring. And Nyla Rose, as I said, she's fantastic. Um, this was a really, really, really good match, and one of the matches of the night for me because of the exchanges they did, these two, the wrestling, the overall feel of the match. Just felt like. You know, Tay at one point may lose, but no, she picked up the one for her DDT. Um, DTI, I think it's called, I'm not sure. Um, is it Hamlock DDT? I'll call it that. But um, she picked up, to, I'm not going to call it an upset, because Tay has kind of been picking up some important wins, and she's you know up there in terms of contendership, because she's been winning matches on AW Dark and Elevation. So, you know, the, the push is starting to go, and I'm, pr I'm happy to say that, because I think she's great. She's really done a lot of great stuff. Nyla Rose has done some great stuff too in AEW and continues to do so. So, definite thumbs up for these two for what was a cracking match. 
Which brings us to the main event, and another one I'm going to call match tonight. And there was quite a few of them. <laughs> this one, the opening match, the women's match between Nyla Rose and Tay Conte, and the six-man tag match. This was another one. John Silver challenging Darby Allen for the TNT Championship. And last week, Darby Allen said he wants to put out an open challenge, and he wanted to defend the belt against the people who want to um, challenge for it. I thought that's great, you know, and I can kind of an open challenge to the locker room. And of course, when I heard John Silver stepped up, I thought that's great because uh, the most lovable faction in all of AEW and perhaps one of the most lovable guys in all of AEW, John Silver, went in a very rare singles outing, to be fair. And it's a time match, and I was all for that. But this was a really, really, really good back and forth match between two wrestlers right now on top of the game. And John, John Silver, whether he's tagging or his singles, he is great. No other way to say it. And I think one of the strongest guys in all of AEW against Darby Allen, who is perhaps the most daredevil wrestler, or if not one of the most daredevil wrestlers out there. He will take any risk he can to put on what he wants to do, in his, so to apply to his craft in the ring. I didn't do it as much in this match, but he did put on some really good matches. But it's one of those matches that John Silver kind of had Darby uh, scouted a little bit and counted some of his moves that he likes to do. And very cool to see that, and um, it was a very, very good match with a very, very good ending. Darby Allen winning of the Code Red. Um, if, you, if you know what that movie that is, you'll, you know what it is. Um, it was just really good stuff. I thought this was a superb tie match too, and a further proof that Darby Allen is a very, very good champion because he's unorthodox as they come. He's, there is nobody in pro wrestling like him, and that's great. He's, he can stand out from the crowd. And he does it superb fashion. He's very, very good in the ring. I've, I've seen him wrestle many, many times. I've actually met him. Nice, very nice guy. I've never met John Silver. What am I meeting John Silver one day? Because I do like him. But this was a really good back and forth match. And as I said, a very, very good title match to see on AEW Dynamite. And I wouldn't mind seeing more matches like this in the future because Darby is starting to defend the belt a lot more. I, I can't remember who he has next week. If he actually has a um, match next week in the defending the belt but still this was a really really good main event to top off what was a fantastic episode of dynamite this week and again AEW this year has just been on fire and it, this was further further adding fuel to the fire to keep it burning and thumbs up to everyone involved what was a cracking cracking episode of dynamite and thumbs up for everyone involved and on that positive note, that is it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you appreciate it. <laughs> I will see everybody very, very soon. But until next time, take care, everyone.